Hello Underwater friends. In today's video, we're gonna talk about filming with the red camera and Keldan light. I was so lucky to have students that had a red camera, Keldan light, and a girlfriend, she had a Sony A7S III with good lights as well. It's gonna be the next video. So let's dive into it. So how is it to capture the depth with a red camera and a Keldan 10,000 lumen. Regarding filming, the RED camera stands tall as one of the best in the industry. It's a powerhouse known for its cinematic jaw-dropping quality and super high resolution and frame rate. So what best can we get? But when you take this beast underwater, how does it stand? Is it good or not? Well, we'll talk about it. The RED camera is a cinematic marvel. So many movies have been shot with it. Imagine a vibrant coral reef, turtle passing by, nudie branch, and so many other things that we can shoot. The red camera can film underwater with almost no competition. But the price, it's very high though. It's about $80,000 for the setup. And then you need to put more than 15 for the housing and only a few brands do it. I was lucky to try the Nauticam one, which is about $16,000. You also have gates, but that's pretty much it and everything you will buy for them, any accessory is gonna be super expensive. I was lucky to try a model that is a little bit old, it's like eight years old or something, but it's still 6K and films with amazing quality. The sensor is just incredible. So of course, if you buy a new one, it's gonna be super expensive, but if you're into pro videos, you don't mind the size and anything, then you may look for a second-hand one and find something very nice for a price that is still gonna be high but much less. The setup I tried is probably worth $20,000 nowadays so compared to the hundred that it was before it's still okay. One of the big problems with RED is that before when you had a problem with your camera they would fix it. Now if it's three generations old they don't fix it anymore. They say that or it's obsolete and they don't fix it. They will not change it for you, they will not do anything. So you're on your own and that's the main problem. Of course you can find people that will fix it, but they will not take care of it. So I think it's a very bad sign giving to the industry because if you cannot change your camera every three years or four maybe, then at some point if you get troubles, it's all on you and they won't even cover or have the parts or anything to replace. So let's talk about specifications a little bit. The RED camera have a 16.5 dynamic range. It's huge. So you can have details, highlight and shadows that are amazing. Your footage will be incredible even in low light conditions. But we have the Keldon that we're gonna talk about in a minute. So we're not worried about this too much. You have a 6K resolution. You can edit it in 6K and then downscale it if you need 4K, or you can crop in the picture and still have an amazing 4K image. You also have a high frame rate, 100 frames per second. So you want to do a slow motion? No problem, you can do it. You can slow down four times. So anything special that happens, you have so many frames taken in a second that you're gonna be able to get all of it, even if something super fast happens, you're gonna slow it down. The RED has a cinema quality sensor. It's one of the best in the industry. It still have a high, high rating. And even if it's an older one, it's incredibly good. And it has a cinematic look like no other. The sensor of the RED camera is amazing for color, texture, and everything you can expect from it. It's still one of the best in the industry and makes amazing cinematic look. The sensor have a 6144 by 3160, which is huge. Your images will be sharp, whether you want to watch it on your phone, on your computer, or even on a cinema screen. The battery is very large, but it will last one dive without a problem. You turn on the camera, start recording when you want, and then you're gonna have good shots, and it will last easily 50, 60 minutes. So normally, no problem with the battery. Of course, you will have to change it between the dives. Otherwise, you may end up with missing shots at the end and you'll be very frustrated. One of the amazing things with this camera is that it starts pre-recording. 
So you press the record button, it starts pre-recording. It's not on your disc yet, but then when you press the second time, then you will have four seconds or even more before what happens that will be recorded. I was not lucky to have a yawning frogfish or anything like this during these shots, but as long as you're pre-recording and then something amazing happens and you press the button, it's in the box. So let's talk about the pros and cons. For the pros, cinematic images. Your images are incredibly nice and if you want to shoot for cinema or for documentaries or anything like this, you'll be amazed. 6K resolution, like we talked about, you can either downgrade it, export 6K, or even crop in the picture down to 4K and still have incredible images. 100 frames per second, amazing as well. With 6K resolution, you can film many images in one second, slow it down because something amazing happened, or even just to reduce camera shake and make it nicer, no problem. This camera also have a large display. It's not to be forgotten that if you want to have an external display, it's gonna be quite a lot of money. So this one already have a very nice screen in the back and will allow you to see exactly what you're gonna film and how it's gonna look. For the cons, well, the biggest one will be the size of the files. File size is huge. I filmed for three days. I ended up having 200 giga of rush and actually 200 giga of rush usable meaning that I deleted about 100 or 200 more just filming on six dives. Second thing that can be a problem is the size. The camera is bulky already, but when you put it in a housing, it's huge. And if you want to travel with it, you're gonna need to think about it ahead and actually think about how much it's gonna cost to bring your camera with you. The price also is huge, but it's also the price for quality. Like I said, if you want a red camera set up, like a new one, it's gonna cost you around $100,000. But if you want to get a second hand, you can get it for much cheaper and you will have amazing result for it. So cost and price, it will really depend on your budget. If you can afford it and you live in a place where you film all the time, why not? It's a very good investment. But if you're more into amateur and you don't want to spend too much money on your setup, that might not be the best for you. One more con is that there is no autofocus. No autofocus at all, so it's all manual focus. And actually the fact that the focus is on the left side and the recording button is on the right made it a little bit difficult for me because sometimes when you film, you want to hold your camera in two spots and if you have to turn the button, it's difficult. So for wide angle, it's not gonna be a problem, but sometimes for macro, it's gonna be difficult because you're gonna make the focus and you cannot hold your camera the best way when you do this. But when the focus is good, it's amazingly sharp. Another little problem, I don't know if we couldn't find the right thing, but there is a little square in the middle that tells you when it's in focus. And it's actually only in the middle. You cannot move it to know if the eye that is on the side is sharp. So you have focus picking, but we were not able to put it on very high contrast or with different colors that would have made it easier. Maybe I'm wrong, but so far it was a little bit difficult to figure out what was sharp and not. Of course, after three days, I mastered it much better and it was much nicer. So overall, if price is not a problem, it's an amazing camera. And of course, also, if you don't need to travel too much with it. And by the way, the setup is 16 kilo. So you better have a good back or someone help you to carry it in the water and everywhere you go. And by the way, all of the shots you've seen in this video have been shot in Bali. We are in Ahmed, northeast of Bali, not far from Tulamben. And we organize underwater photo course, underwater video course. We organize also diving safari all around Bali and we can accommodate with a private spotter if you need to spend all the time you want to take your videos and photos. We had underwater videographer and I put the link in the description. I was lucky to also try the Keldon 4X 10,000 lumen. Wow, what a great light. This light is compact, super powerful, and the light is uniform. Everywhere the light goes, it's amazingly bright. So like you can understand in the name, 10,000 lumen is huge. Of course, you have the 15,000 one that is called the 
8x, I think, but 10,000 lumen is really good, especially for macro. If you want to film bigger things, further away, everything, anyway, you'll be limited because the water absorption will take light anyway. But if you're filming macro and super macro, 10,000 lumen is way enough. Actually, I was using most of the time like 90 or 80% of the power and it was way enough to have good settings on the camera. The CRI is 85, so it's amazing how bright it is and also how accurate the light is. It's really like if you're bringing the sun with you underwater. It's a consistent color temperature of 5,600 Kelvin, which is the color of the sun. And like I said, everywhere it's the same and very good. This model is not so big, it's about that size, not so heavy either, so it's easy to travel with it, not like the big housing for the camera. The batteries will last about 35 minutes on full power, but like I said before, I never really used full power because it was almost too much. I use about 80% and I was able to have light for two dives without a problem. And if you want to go on the lowest power for a night dive or something at the end of your dive, you're gonna have 850 minutes with only 200 lumen though. The dome coverage is amazingly consistent. There is a dome in the front that diffuses the light and it's incredible how the light is everywhere the same. No hot spot, no problem on the edges. If it's lit, it's lit properly. So for the pros, 10,000 lumen, 5,600 Kelvin, uniform color everywhere. And also it has nine different powers. I told you I was using 80 or 90%, you have nine of them. So you can go from 100% if you really need for a shorter period of time, or you can dim it down to the power you want, and it's incredibly accurate. It has a 110 degree light, so it's very wide, and you won't have a problem, even on wide angle. For the cons, well, number one, the price. It's about $1,600, which is quite a lot for light, especially if you need two of them, and actually you do need two of them. So $3,000 plus dollars on light is the same price as most people's cameras or full setup if you want cheaper ones. Also, the battery are super expensive. If you want to change the battery, I think it's about $500, which is a lot because it would be nice to have two batteries per light and be able to switch it between the dives. But that comes with a cost, and then you go up to more than $2,000 for your light for two dives a day. Final thing that I didn't love about it is only 35 minutes on full power. It's okay, like I said, you work around it, but on full power, you're very limited. So final conclusion about this light, well, overall, it's an amazing light. Very powerful, easy to control how much power you need on a certain shot, amazing 5,600 Kelvin, very uniform, so it was really a blessing to try this. So overall, this setup is just amazing. If money was not an issue, I would love to have it every day and bring it to capture the best of Bali. Thanks for watching the video all the way to the end. Makes me super happy, like always. If you want to put a like, don't hesitate. And also, you can put a comment. The next video will be about the Sony A7S III, and you'll see what I think about it. Bye-bye, happy bubbles.